All right, guys, Mike here with Hardware Canucks once again. And right next to me here is my passive PC build that I personally built. You might want to watch that video before getting too deep into this one because a lot of things are based off the comments in that video. And you can find it sort of like right up here. So let's talk a little bit about those comments because a ton of you guys gave me such good suggestions about how I can optimize this thing. A couple of those things I was already going to do, but some of those comments I really appreciate because it opened up my eyes to a whole other aspect aspect of this build. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to go through all of those optimizations that I wanted to do and that you guys basically recommended, some of the criticisms because yes, I screwed a couple of things up. And not only that, I also wanted to test a couple of more things that the passive purists might be I guess a little bit pissed about, and that would be trying a couple more options with the hybrid fan approach. So I want to get into all of that and a lot more right after a message from our sponsor. Put everything on display, you say? The Tower 100 Mini by Thermaltake grants you a three-way view of your components with that mini vending machine look that is surely unique for an ITX enclosure. You've got ATX power supply support, large CPU tower heat sinks, triple slot GPUs with no riser necessary, and all the ventilated panels are properly dustproof. The motherboard I.O. is facing up for easy access and the two included fans ensure proper airflow out of the box. This Tower 100 Mini is for those who like to explore. Check it out below. All right, guys, with that out of the way, I wanted to bring up one small area that I might have screwed up a little bit, and that's ex not explaining why I built this PC. This was actually a passion project for me that started with some really basic intents. So I wanted to buy a bunch of components and build myself a basic PC that I could use for some light gaming or play some emulators on in my entertainment system downstairs. And past that, it just exploded into a passive ITX PC. And I also wanted to give all the folks who didn't watch the last video a quick recap of this passive PC build. It's all built around the Noctua NHP1 passive heatsink along with the Palette GTX 1650 Comex. And now that happens to be the highest end GPU currently available with a passive cooler, at least that I know of. There's also an i5-11400 hooked up to an ROG Z590i and a passive Silverstone Nightjar 450 watt power supply. That's all wrapped up into an ITX case, the Silverstone Sugo 15. So yeah, it's a passive PC with a discrete GPU and I had a blast building this thing. So anyways, now that I have that off my back, let's talk about one of the first questions or one of the first pieces of advice that was given in that comment thread from the last video. And that was putting the Sugo 15 onto its side. This is one of few cases on the market that can either be mounted sort of like vertically like this or horizontally. Will that change the temperatures? And as you can see on the screen right now, now the answer to that is absolutely not. Nothing changed. So I'm just gonna keep it in this orientation for the rest of this video and probably when I, I bring it home. So the other thing that I wanted to try and what I think like half of you guys mentioned is undervolting the CPU and the GPU. I'm not gonna go into how I did that. If you want a whole other video about how to undervolt AMD, Intel CPUs, AMD and Nvidia GPUs, I'll do that on the side, but anyway, suffice to say my intent here with undervolting is not to get the absolute lowest wattage and temperatures. What I wanted to do is optimize the wattage, the voltage and the performance. So basically make sure that I don't lose one iota of performance while bringing the temperatures down just a bit. Well, let's get right into the results because when I saw this after hours and hours of dialing it in, I was so excited. So. Here's what we have starting right at the top. So right now we are operating at only 55 watts on the 11400. That's a whole 10 watts less than what it was originally running at in its default mode. Not only that, is this test has been running for over an hour at an ambient temperature of about 22.5, but a higher humidity than the last test. And it's still eight to nine degrees, look at this, eight to nine degrees cooler. That is exactly what I wanted to achieve and the clock speeds are staying at the same 3.2 to 3.3 gigahertz as the last time. The other thing is the VRM temperatures and this is something that you guys mentioned in the last one. I sort of screwed up. This was not an actual passive PC in the last video because there's that small 40 millimeter VRM heatsink fan on the motherboard that I used here. And that wasn't running that fast. You couldn't hear it, but it wasn't a true passive PC. So what did I do this time? This time I turned off that heatsink fan and it'll only turn on when the VRMs hit a constant 75 degrees. So VRM temperatures right here, 
64 degrees, well below that. So this is a true passive PC and I wanna prove it to you. So I'm gonna take a super sensitive mic from over here. I hope this is on, camera guy better be on. Now you're gonna hear some ambient noise around me because the noise floor here is around 36.5, 37 decibels. There's some traffic outside, they're doing some construction. So anyways, let's take a listen. There's, there's nothing going on. I hope, no, there's nothing going on. Yeah, you can hear probably a little bit of the vents up there, but. No, absolutely nothing. So that VRM heatsink fan has now been turned completely off. So we're operating passively at so much lower temperatures because of the voltage modifications that were done with the CPU. Now, the other thing is the GPU. So I'm gonna stop this test, let it cool down, reach a baseline and then load up a game for about an hour and come back to you guys. Okay, so when it comes to gaming and the GPU temperatures, there's some positives and negatives here. So let me get into it. Even though I spent hours trying to modify the voltage curve on this GPU and the overall clock speeds, the end result was the same. It's always gonna be between 83 and 84, like we saw in the last test, and 1,665 megahertz because that's where NVIDIA's boost algorithm basically caps it at this temperature. All we're doing actually is delaying the inevitable. The heatsink on the pallet cart isn't quite good enough to handle the amount of heat that we're throwing at it even with the GTX 1650 core. So instead of it reaching this point in the old test in about 30 minutes, it took about 45 minutes to an hour to actually reach this. So if you're quick gaming session, great. But once it reaches that saturation level, all bets are off. But, but check out the CPU temperatures. They are good, let me just check my notes here. They are good, 10 to 11 degrees cooler than the last one. So that confirms that that GPU is actually putting out a lot less heat. Now, the next part of this, well, this is where the passive PC enthusiast might wanna sort of take a step back. I wanted to take a bunch of your suggestions about fan placement. Where can I place the fans on this case in order to maximize the amount of performance and minimize the amount of temperatures that are built up in it? But the important thing here is that the minimum noise floor of about 36.5, 37 decibels cannot be exceeded. So it still can be an extremely, extremely quiet build. All right, so there's something that you're gonna notice right away. That's probably the fact that I'm in a different attire. The testing last night took so long with all the different fan positions that this is sort of like day number two of testing. And the second thing I wanted to mention is you're probably gonna notice this. I'm not gonna get into everything that happened, but let's just say that Mike's cooking tips are not gonna happen anytime soon because one of my tips is actually on the cutting board at home. But anyways, let's talk about a couple of fan positions that I tested and how that would potentially affect airflow. So first of all, that top position, the only thing that you can mount there on top of the P1 in this case is a 15 millimeter high fan. And you're gonna see this again and again. I was using the Scythe Kaze 120 millimeter 15 millimeter high fan. So anyways, what did I do? First thing is you cannot use the bracket that Silverstone gives you for the top of the case because that actually makes it a little bit too thick. So you have to mount this directly to the P1. Now, the other fan position that I was sort of interested in following up on is the back one. And that would be sort of drawing out air from the inside of the case. That one, luckily there's enough space there to add a 25 millimeter high, also Scythe Kaze fan. Now, a lot of you guys also mentioned one thing and that's the bottom of the case. What happens if you start drawing in cool air from the bottom? Now, this is interesting because this case doesn't actually support a bottom fan. So what I end up doing, so hey, look at this, magic. All right, so I took a couple of handy dandy zip ties and I strapped that 25 millimeter Kaze fan to the bottom of the case, drawing in that air. Now the last area that I swear everybody must have been yelling at me about is what I did with this side bracket. So this side bracket, if I can just bring in the case here again, without the base, uh, I don't want to drop anything, is supposed to go right over here, right? So it goes here and I had it drawing in cool air. And what that ended up doing is 
basically the internal components heated each other up because there wasn't enough space for that sort of cool air to circulate and then escape. So I made two mistakes there. Number one, I wasn't drawing out hot air. Number two is this fan bracket can actually be reversed and I totally didn't know that. So you can actually reverse it and bring it sort of down here. Yeah, let's see, yeah, down here in order to sort of focus more on the GPU area. And that's something that I tested as well. So I really wanted to go through all of those and look at the results. So let's start with that single fan on the top drawing hot air out from the case. So it wasn't too great on the GPU. It hit 81 degrees Celsius at 1,775 megahertz. The CPU on the other hand, because that fan is right there, 55 degrees Celsius was absolutely perfect. On the other hand, with the fan at the back, something interesting happened because it's a thicker fan, it caused a little bit more noise and I had to reduce the speed to 500 RPMs in order to hit the acoustic floor that I wanted. Anyways, here the GPU hit a pretty reasonable 70 degrees Celsius at 1845 megahertz. So that means it was almost boosting to its maximum amount. CPU on the other hand, 57 degrees Celsius. Again, amazing. But the bottom, the bottom blew my mind. I wasn't expecting this. So first of all, let's talk about the CPU temperatures. I was expecting the processor to start eating the heat from that GPU, but I think undervolted, the GTX 1650 really doesn't produce all that much heat to begin with. So that CPU only hits 60 degrees Celsius. But the real story here, guys, is the GPU. Because that fan is right up against it, it only hit 49 degrees Celsius and the boost clock was 1875 megahertz. And that is absolutely the best we've seen. But what about the side fan that we were all talking about in the comments of the last video? Okay, so this is the last test in this long sort of journey between a passive PC and a sort of hybrid PC. And where are we now with this fan on the side exhausting hot air? So it's actually exactly the same temperature, more or less, as the fan exhausting hot air out the back. So I guess in all of this, where am I gonna go with this build? Am I gonna take the passive approach or am I gonna take the hybrid approach? And I know this is never going to appeal to everybody because some people are passive PC enthusiasts and some people say go with the hybrid approach. But to be honest with you, where this thing is gonna live in my basement, I won't be able to hear the fan running if it's at its current RPM levels. So I guess what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna run this in a semi-passive mode. And what that means is I'm gonna have it running passive until the CPU and GPU hit a certain temperature. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the fan kick in probably on this side in order to sort of balance that temperature. But at least then I'm going to be in a completely passive mode for most of the time because a lot of the workloads I'm putting on this aren't Jedi Fallen Order like you see over here. So the other thing that I just wanted to mention very, very quickly is of course dust penetration because if I'm in this semi-passive mode, there will be dust coming into this case. So what I wanna do here is run it for maybe a month, maybe two, come back, maybe post on social media about how much dust is actually accumulated in here without any dust filters. Because remember, I removed those in order to stimulate more airflow. So I guess that's pretty much it for this two video series. I'm still so excited about this. I love the fact that I've been able to explore how good a passive cooler can be when adding a little bit of airflow and also just the passive PC build itself. It's been so eye-opening for me, and I hope it's been eye-opening for you. If you wanna see more of these type of builds, please guys, you know, comment down below, make sure that you subscribe. It really inspires me to do more of them, and if you guys have any more suggestions, throw them out in the comments. I'm always reading them. So anyways, I'm Mike with Haru Canucks. I really hope you enjoyed this. I know I did, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys. <clears throat> okay, no, I, don't, I always say all right. Number two, uh, no, number two. Where's number one? <laughs> so I built this PC by myself. No, of course I built it by myself. You saw me building it. Hey, that was so good, but then it was boom. Scythe Kaze, ah, bleeding again. Right hand. You know what? I don't think this is gonna happen. <laughs>